All right, welcome to Heels, Deals, and Wheels. And today we have the lovely seasoned mobile home oh. investor. Oh, yeah, you know that's you, Miss <laughs> Missy Malone. How you doing, Missy? I am doing well, Kelly. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So good. Me, and, me and Missy have been corresponding on the, what, FaceTime, making phone calls. Uh, yeah. when, we, when we both started off as newbies in the mobile home business, <laughs> And now yeah. we're both pretty much considered seasoned. And Ooh, I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. You might be Kelly. No, you. <laughs> now you know you seasoned. You know you see. I think I'm. St I think I'm still a newbie, quite honestly. But it's all good. Seasoned or not, you still. It's it's an ongoing process for learning, right? Right. Right. So, so yeah. Missy, tell us a little bit about you, and then how you started off in the mobile home business. Okay, let me try to be as short as I possibly can. Um, so this mobile home investing journey for me is actually my second act, Kelly. Um, I was a medical nail technician prior to all of this and was trying to find something that I could do to supplement my income. Mm -hmm. um, when the pandemic came, my, I mean, I was actually working at a hospital, and so obviously being a medical nail a medical nail technician, that's not considered essential. And I had to figure out how I was going to continue to bring in some income, mm -hmm. and I happened upon mobile home investing. Um, to be quite honest with you, I've always wanted to get involved with real estate, but the traditional way just seemed very far-fetched for me in that it was very costly, you know, so I thought. Um, and so I just kind of started doing some research. Happened upon mobile home investing, was intrigued by it, and uh, the first thing I did was dive into a wholesaling program. And that was probably... I want to say maybe the end of June or July of last year, okay. and I've kind of just been moving ever since. All right, so Missy, I recently reached yes. out to you because I noticed you acquired a free mobile home. Can you run yes. that, run us through how that happened and run us through the numbers of that mobile home? Yes, so really what I did was just went down the list of mobile home parks, Kelly, and was just calling people to find out if they had any uh, fixer-uppers or handyman specials, anything that they had where, you know, they would be willing to let me come in and work on it. And um, I happened upon this park, and she told me they had handyman specials available. Um, the homes that they were giving away, you basically are just responsible for the lot rent, um, and then they give you an opportunity to fix it up. That's how I got, I mean, I just literally asked, and okay. that's it. And so how much was the lot rent? 385 Okay, and did you have to apply through the park, or they gave you like a storage agreement, or? No, I did apply, um, and so what I did is after kind of establishing, now my dog is acting silly with his toy, so I apologize. <laughs> that's okay, squeaky, that's okay. Squeaky toy. <laughs> um, but really what I did is I applied, um, as if I were going to be a resident of the park, I was told that that was just your policy, whether you were considered an inve investor or not. Um, I did that, and that was it. So just put out the paperwork. They gave me their requirements on what they were, would expect of me as far as um, renovating the home, and that's it. Okay, and so, the, so it was a free mobile home, and did you mm -hmm. rehab it? I did. I, I thought I was going to try to wholesale it and flip, fix, uh, flip it, but, you know, the more I started looking at the home, Kelly, I thought, you know what, I could do this. And I'd seen other people, you know, oh, so, so sorry, I'd seen other people post their, um, you know, testimonies and success stories about fixing and flipping, and I'm thinking if they can do it, I can too. And so I just kind of went I don't even know if I went feet first. I went head first, feet first. I was just all in, okay. not really knowing what to expect. Okay. Um, but we did it. Um, I'm going to say I acquired the home, like, in October. Okay. And we finished it probably, I'm going to say, right before Thanksgiving. And obviously there were some unforeseeable things that occurred, but we got through it. And yeah. I actually just closed on the home. I did a rent to own this past Friday. Okay. So very excited about it. Still a little scared because, you know, again, I'm still new as far as this part of the exit strategy is concerned. Right. Um, but I'm enjoying the ride for sure. Okay. And so when all is said and done, what would you, did you calculate your uh, return on your investment? But I guess that's, yeah. this renting. So you're going to have money coming in 
Yes. Forever. Now, I will be very honest with you. Obviously, I know that I already know that I put way more money into it than I should have. Right. Um, just listening to other people's podcasts and, and stories or, you know, lessons about investing, um, I've heard that the cap is $8,000. That's like the general cap. Okay. Um, I probably put 10000 into it, but that was because my husband, okay. <laughs> who is in construction, and he also does rehab, but he does rehab on commercial buildings and doctor's offices and things of that nature. So I think he got involved and yeah. started putting extra stuff in there. Um, but at the end of the day, he is a numbers guy, and we were able to calculate, okay, what it would take for us to recoup that money and still earn, you know, get um um, what am I trying to say? A return on our investment. So we actually listed the house for twenty two thousand okay. um, five hundred. That would be like the cash price, right? If someone were to buy it outright. Okay. Um, but we also decided, you know, financing it, doing a rent to own would probably be ideal. So the the home has to stay in the park for five years. We decided to extend that to uh, eighty four months. Okay. And um, the lot rent being three eighty five, we wanted the um, we made the rent 700 obviously. That does include the lot rent. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to do 300, get cash flow, I'm sorry, $315 uh, each month. So, right. and again, that's for 84 months. So right. after we did the calculations, that interest would be uh, about $6,600. Wow. Okay, so yeah. really you didn't have to put, like you said, how many months was this deal to rent it? Um. 84. 84. So really, you didn't have to say 84. You could have received this money for the rest of your life as long as the mobile home mm -hmm. was. Yeah. So this person mm -hmm. wanted to own that mobile home eventually. That's why you put the cap on the, the money. Yes. Okay. Yes. But really, yes. really, you, did, out to us. you could have found somebody who would have paid you that for the rest of your life. And you probably could have uh, increased it later on down the road if you got a new tenant. Correct. Right. And there, you know, there's always a possibility, I'm knocking on some wood, that that doesn't happen because right. we do have some other homes that we're looking at. However, if that doesn't happen, like if they decide, you know what, we don't want to rent to own, there's still that opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's the beautiful thing about mobile home investing is that it, it just don't stop. Like, mm -hmm. it does not stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I try to tell people. And so in my course, I try to interview people, Missy, like yourself. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to interview somebody who's been interviewed 50 million times. You know, sure. I want to interview the average person like you yes. and myself, you know, and it's going to come a point where they're going to interview you to death and I'm not going to want to interview no, you no more. I want to interview <laughs> the average person because a lot of people think, oh, Missy got in on this deal in the beginning. She got in mm -hmm. on the mobile home business in the beginning. So that's why it works for her. I don't want right. people to think that because this could work for anybody. This could work for it, anybody. That is so true. Yeah. That is so true. And I think I think really what holds people back, Kelly, from being successful or taking that first step is fear. Like oh you have God, you've yeah. got to, you've got to be able first and foremost to speak, you know, talk to people. That's that's number one. You've got to be able to talk to people. And then number two, you have to kind of develop a thick skin. Because everybody is not going to understand what you're doing, and there may, there's going to be a lot of rejection along the way. Once you get past that, I think you will be on your road to success. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many mobile homes, uh, mobile home parks I contacted, and they were like, what? No, hung up in my face, got cursed out. You know, deals fell through. People didn't do what they said they were going to do. I mean, you name it. Right. And I'm pretty sure I will continue to experience that, but mm -hmm. that's part of the journey. That's right. part of it. Right, but would you yeah. say that the good outweighs the bad? Oh, definitely, most mm -hmm. definitely. But mm -hmm. you just have to keep going, keep going. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, keep going. Mm -hmm. And so what would be, and you pretty much done said it already, what would be your words of wisdom for somebody new to this to this market? Um, I would say don't get stuck with having thinking you have to know every single thing about mobile home investing. And I am like that. Like So when I get involved with something, obviously I want to soak up as much information as possible, right? But there comes a time when you have to take what you've learned and you have to apply it. It may not be perfect. It may not be the same scenario that, you know, Kelly or Amy or Susie got, but you still have to apply it. 
So I would say, you know, you continue to learn as you go. Don't get so caught up in, oh, my God, I've got to learn all of this before I actually start, you know, investing. No, I was, I'm still learning as I go. Like, I would read a module. Okay, let me apply that put the module down and I would start making phone calls okay. or I would start doing ghost ads or whatever it is the module at, you know suggested I do. I just started applying it immediately. Okay. And so and, you, you, you say in module, uh, so as the course that you took, yeah. okay, you could, you could go ahead and mention that course. It, it, it is. Um, mm -hmm. So when I first got involved, obviously I was told um, that wholesaling was the best route to take uh, because that requires the least amount of money, right? Okay. Um, and that you would also be able to do a number of wholesales so that you can raise your capital so that you could explore other exit strategies. So I took um, Shaman Van Gundy's wholesaling uh, program okay. and again that was towards the end of June, early part of July last year. Okay. And I mean I did that, followed her program and acquired my first home probably in started July probably at the end of July I acquired my first home okay and so where do you mainly do business is there any <clears throat> state or do you venture out to other states or I actually have ventured out into another state but I think I did that by accident okay um, I think someone responded to my ad and they were uh, looking for a home to put in Oklahoma um, I happen to know of another mobile home investor in Oklahoma, so I was like, well, I don't have this one available anymore, but let me reach out to my business partner right, right. in Oklahoma. Now, he's not my business partner officially, exactly. but he is a fellow mobile home investor, Right. and so we collaborated and got the deal done, and so that was my first virtual wholesale deal. Right, right. Because so you and you I will and, go wherever. Yeah, because you and I almost did a couple of deals. You had a couple of, of properties that I was interested in. In, but you know, I like yes. three, three bedroom, two baths. But I think yours was like two bedroom, one bath, or something yes. of that nature. But we, we've already, yes. we almost cut a deal or two uh, a couple of times. So, we did, yeah. So, how does the paperwork go for uh, buying and selling a mobile home? What, 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 what is, what do you do? So, what I have used, like, first of all, when you want to get the home under contract, if you found a seller that's agreed to work with you and has allowed you to market the home, if you're doing a wholesale deal, you do want to get what we call a mobile, um, a mobile home purchase agreement. And basically, that's just stating that the seller understands that you are marketing the home on their behalf. You are going to find an end buyer for that home. Okay. That's the first document that I got. The second one I got once I did find an end buyer was the mobile home sales agreement. And that's basically stating that they are going to purchase this home as is right. and it's going to be for this amount. And then of course you list everything that comes with that home, whether it's the appliances or no appliances, whether it's air, air conditioning or no air conditioning, whatever is included in that home, you always want to stress as is on that mobile home sales agreement. And then I also just um, recently started using an assignment contract and that's just for my own records so okay. that um, the end buyer and the seller know that, hey, I have assigned this contract. I'm basically turning this contract over to this end buyer and I just want them to sign off on it. Mm -hmm. Some people use that and some people don't, okay. um, but it's just something for my records is okay. all. Okay. And so do you help with the transfer of the title or the, um, these contracts, that's the end of it? So I'm going to say on this last one, cause I just, I closed on a wholesale deal this past Friday as well. Congratulations. And, uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> and so the gentleman that bought the home, the end buyer, he really wasn't too familiar. This was his first mobile home purchase, right? Okay. So he wasn't even sure how, where to find a transporter and how to put all that into place. So we all met up at the bank, uh, made sure that the monies were transferred over appropriately or properly. Um, I then assisted him with uh, getting a transporter. Um, and then I also gave them that title right then and there. I did provide the seller though with a copy just um, just in case because these things happen. And right. So I just wanted everybody to have the proper documentation just in case they needed to refer to it later. Right. So Missy, where do you see yourself five years from now in the, in the mobile home business? Where do you see yourself? Five years from now, I would love to be in a position where I have a mobile home park. I think at the end of the day, once you get involved with this, 
that's really the end goal because it's nice to have a home that you you know sold for cash or that you rented out or that you've done a rent to own process with but the ultimate is owning that whole land right okay. so i yeah. definitely want to get a mobile home park or two under my belt. Right. And see, I know mm -hmm. that that new investors, when you get into this business, it's just second nature that you're going to eventually want to park. And that's why mm -hmm. I do or uh, I do offer a free uh, seven series mobile home buying park course along with my course. Because it's just yeah. once you finish my course or anybody else's course, that's just second nature. This is this what you what I want to that's do. That's what you aspire to do. Exactly. Yes. If you if you serious about it, that's the end goal. That right. should be at least. That should be. Right. So mm -hmm. Missy, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you're busy and we both got two barking dogs. I think my dog <laughs> I barked your dog though. I think so. So <laughs> do you have any final words that you want to add? And I, number one, I, I don't know if I, I said it, but I do appreciate you taking your time out to talk to me. I've been waiting to talk to you oh, for a little you. bit. And when I saw that free mobile home, I said, I got to interview you because people are not going to believe you. You could get a free mobile home. Yeah. I actually came across a couple of months ago, three uh, free mobile homes and I hold so, so those out, but people just don't believe yeah. it. So do you have any final words before you leave us? Um, I think just kind of repeating or reiterating what I said before, if this is something that you're serious about doing, definitely go for it. Um, do find a program that works for you. There are lots of mobile home investor courses out there. Um, I would say do your due diligence, you know, to decide which one meets your needs because, again, there's exit strategies out the wazoo, right? Right, right? So figure out which program is working for you and just do it. And then the second thing I would say, Kelly, is just to make sure that you stay connected. I don't know. You could possibly be successful doing this by yourself, mm -hmm. but you will get so much further along if True. you have a support system mm -hmm. and that can be within your household or you can be with other mobile home investors right mm -hmm. so I think on this journey I've um, established rapport and relationships with other mobile home investors like yourself um, I have a couple of transporters that I have befriended um, you know other wholesalers you know just the gamut yeah. so I think if you just stay connected and just put yourself out there get comfortable being uncomfortable then you're well on your way oh my god I mean I love that last saying you say get comfortable being uncomfortable I, I love that. yes so Missy yes. before you, we leave today do you want to give uh, people your contact information or are they able to contact you about a mobile home or, sure okay. go, sure. Ahead, and, go now, ahead and give that I, I'm still learning I'm still you know trying to get um, LLCs and all that stuff together as we start you know acquiring other mo more homes I was like oh I kind of get serious about you know really getting this in my business name yeah. um, so I coined myself the trailer cash queen so if there are some other trailer cash queens out there that want to get started you are more than welcome to give me a call my number is 817-969-7909 um, and like you Kelly I do have some other homes that I'm wholesaling so just know that you're not in this by yourself I'm not gonna hold your hand and coddle you but I will definitely you know be with you along the way if this is what you want to do okay all right thank you so much missy i appreciate thank it thank you kelly i appreciate you thank you all right <laughs> bye bye, -bye.